Thank you. Oh, but they did not lock it for me. Okay. So, when we first started the Photosynth project in 2007, it was really with a very big idea in mind. We wanted to think about how to reinvent the whole enterprise of photography for ordinary people. And in particular, we were thinking about how we might do that using the tools of computer vision and augmented reality. Computer vision is very central to a lot of the different kinds of demos that we've seen in the previous talks in this session. And what it really is about is enabling the computer to understand images as spatiotemporal capture events, as renditions of the real world at a particular place and moment in time. And once the computer understands those things, then it becomes possible to manipulate in all sorts of ways that are not possible if one just thinks about the pixels in a sort of Photoshop style. It's just a, a two-dimensional grid of values. So um, the first really mainstream application of photosynth and of computer vision technology in, in the kind of consumer environment, I think, was um, the photosynth app that we released a couple of years ago. And uh, what I'm showing you here now is essentially the same thing. It's the, it's the Photosynth app, but it's now integrated into the next version of Windows, which is uh, coming out very shortly. And I don't, think, I don't think this has been shown in public before. It's something that I'm very proud of, and it's one of the things that makes it really fun for me to be working at Microsoft, because when we do things, it's possible for them to really reach a very wide audience, much, much more than if we were just releasing apps into an app store somewhere. So those capabilities are now in the camera itself, and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you what, what th that was just a capture that my team and I did on, uh, on Friday, and this is the result. So it's a full, full spherical capture. Now, um, in the meantime, we've been working, of course, on, on the next generations of that technology and on what, what happens after we just uh, think about the fusion of images onto a sphere and two-dimensional tracking, which is what you just saw. And um, so what I'm going to show you next is what we have uh, working in the lab today to go beyond that two-dimensional capture and we'll be releasing uh, very shortly as well. This is another kind of panorama. And um, the thing that you might notice as I rotate is that it's a three-dimensional panorama. The branches in the foreground move with parallax. They move at different speeds from, uh, from the background. And in fact, even the depth of field changes. You, know, you might notice, for example, here that the, the tree trunk is a little bit blurry. And as we rotate, it comes into focus. And what's going on here is, in some sense, a solution to the problem of panorama capture, which is that when you're trying to fuse images together onto a sphere, you really need to hold the device still in space and only rotate, because otherwise you introduce parallax, and then it becomes very hard to create a stitch from a consistent point of view. But on the other hand, it's very difficult for somebody to do that, typically. The, the normal action when somebody takes a panorama is like this, which is moving both the... It's both rotating and moving the focal point at the same time. But here we're making lemonade out of that, in a way, because the other thing that happens when you move is that you have enough information to reconstruct 3D. Because if you hold the camera completely still and only rotate, then you, you don't have the information to reconstruct 3D. So... Um, that's how you get the three-dimensional effect. And once you have freed yourself from the constraint to keep the camera fixed as you rotate around, you can start to try other sorts of things as well. So uh, I'll show you kind of an odd, an odd one. That was, uh, that was 34 photos, by the way, that you just saw. This is uh, a planar panorama, but a planar three-dimensional panorama that somebody took out the window of plane.
And what's, what's interesting about this one is that you can see the individual frames, the individual captures of those, of those photos as we go, and it creates this, this sort of um, vertiginous, time lapse impression. So it's very, very different from, um, from an ordinary planar capture, of course, because all these things have been modeled in, in 3D based on the original images. Now, uh, let's get a little bit uh, crazier than just the sort of outward panorama or the planar panorama, which are fairly standard for, uh, for doing fused panoramic imaging. And let's think about what happens if we take those outward captures and we turn them so that you are rotating around a subject instead. That's what you see here. All right, so this is about 60 images of our friend Noah. And uh, I can use this, this capture to, give you, to, to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So um, this is the reconstructions of the positions of the, of the camera during each of the original captures. And you can see that the scene's been broken apart geometrically. And Noah has been modeled in 3D, and so has the background. And it's essentially by projecting the image onto that geometry that you can interpolate, that you can create alternate views that aren't the view that the original image was taken from. And it's the process of projecting the images onto that geometry that allows you to morph and to turn what started off as a chain of independent images into a continuous surface or a, a continuous mesh of imagery. Uh, I'll, I'll show you one, one more example uh, that, I, that I shot yesterday uh, in Edinburgh, in the, uh, in the castle. Let's see, let me pick the right one. So this is about 100 pictures that I just uh, I shot in a different configuration. This time it's a walk, so I'm walking forward. This is a fairly long walk. And what, what, I think, what I think is really quite wonderful about this is that not only have this set of 100 or so images turned into something continuous and three-dimensional, but when, when we think about our broader ambition to take these individual pieces of social media and start to stitch them together into something collective, we believe that these continua of images are the right building blocks to use to do that. And uh, you, can, you can sort of see that in, in these, um, these three-dimensional reconstructions. It's, this is a, a good part of the, of the top of the castle in, in 3D from that particular walk. So I think I, I should uh, stop here, Bruno, since I'm a little bit over time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.